one control surface to rule them all. This is the Stream Deck Studio. As soon as it's unboxed, the Stream Deck Studio is a different beast from what we're used to in a Stream Deck. It still has 32 of the familiar LCD keys on it in a 2x16 configuration, and it also has two infinite rotary dials like we've seen on the Stream Deck Plus. But this device wasn't really designed to be plopped on your desk behind your keyboard, although it can be. Instead, it comes packed with these two brackets, which allow you to mount it into a 19-inch rack. This is the first clue that the Stream Deck Studio wasn't designed to be shackled to a single PC setup. This guy is more at home when it's mounted above, below, or in between professional broadcast equipment on a network of controllable devices. When I say network, I literally mean computer network. If we flip the Stream Deck Studio around, we can actually see there are three ports on the back, two USB-C shaped ports and an RJ45 network port. At this point, we can talk about how the Stream Deck Studio actually has two operating modes, USB and Ethernet. I wanna cover both of these and I'll start with USB. Taking a look at the two USB ports, the one on the left hand side is actually a 9 volt 3 amp power delivery port, which you'll need power attached to if you want to use the other USB port to connect directly to your PC. Once it's attached, it's actually set up and configured using the same familiar Elgato Stream Deck software that we're used to. Now at this point, if you've got the Stream Deck Studio racked up and attached to your PC, you now have, in my opinion, the coolest looking Stream Deck to do things like turning your key lights on and off, change wavelength volumes, etc. But that's just it. Plugged in via USB, you've essentially got access to the same things as you would with a regular a stream deck. But what about that ethernet port? Let's go on a quick little story time tangent. Once upon a time, there was a small, friendly Norwegian company called Bitfocus AS. Bitfocus AS was founded in 2017, which coincidentally was the same year that Elgato released their first Stream Deck. While the Stream Deck was marketed to help simplify content creator workflows, Bitfocus released their companion software to take the high quality and accessible Stream Deck hardware and integrate it into complex professional AV setups. So think things like television studio productions, live event lighting and broadcasts, security camera switching, even multi-track recording studios. Traditionally, customizable switching hardware in these environments was tremendously expensive and often had a pretty steep learning curve. Bitfocus Companion challenged these norms and as it matured, it enabled professionals and amateurs in the multimedia industry to really thrive with simplified workflows and excellent hardware. One day, Elgato and Bitfocus decided to shack up and have a baby. And that was how the Stream Deck Studio was born, along with its software sibling, Bitfocus Buttons. Now let's talk about this ethernet port. In order to use this, you'll obviously need a cabled network in your environment, and preferably you'll want PoE or power over ethernet so you can provide Stream Deck Studio with a single cable. Once it's plugged in, you'll get a little bit of a boot up sequence where you'll manage to spot a cheeky IP address if you're super quick. If you missed it, don't stress. You can actually press and hold in the two rotary encoders for 10 seconds. This will reboot the Stream Deck Studio. If you're quick and you press the mode key at the top, you can change it from DHCP to static IP if you want that much control. Otherwise, it's pretty safe to leave as it is on most networks. Now's the time we want to head over to bitfocus.io in a web browser, create an account, download Bitfocus software, and unlock the full potential of the Stream Deck Studio. I mentioned before Bitfocus Companion. That's the original and more mature Bitfocus software, and it works really, really well with Stream Deck Studio. But I also mentioned Bitfocus Buttons. Buttons has been designed specifically with the Stream Deck Studio in mind, so going forward, Buttons should be your default operating system. At the time of making this video, it's still in open beta, so it should be noted there will be a subscription service, but the original companion software will always be open source and free. You can think of Buttons as a souped up, easy to customize version of Companion, because it actually runs on the same modules that Companion does. You can install these onto any computer on your network, but if you've got the infrastructure, there's actually some benefits to running Bitfocus on its own server. I'll touch on these a bit later though. So what's the big deal about being on the network running Bitfocus buttons? Well, here's one simple use case. Imagine we've got a single Stream Deck connected to a PC via USB. We generally have control over that one PC and that one PC alone. You can control things like OBS, Discord, etc., but all on that single PC. Now, imagine you've upgraded to a dual PC setup, so you can really bump up the quality of your gaming PC while your streaming PC does the heavy encoding work. You like to keep your Stream Deck plugged into the Stream PC so you can control OBS, but if you've got voice comms on your gaming box, you've now lost the quick and easy Stream Deck buttons to mute or change volumes on the fly because the Stream Deck is plugged into the other PC. If instead we were running Bitfocus buttons, we could jump over to the Connections tab and search for the services we want to control. We could add in OBS Studio, point that to the IP address of the stream box, and then add a Discord connection and set it up to control Discord on the gaming PC. And presto, we now have the Stream Deck Studio controlling services on multiple PCs. 
The beauty of the BitFocus Companion Module backend is that it's driven by the open source community. So when you take a full list of the available connections, there are literally hundreds of brands of devices and software that can be controlled by the Stream Deck Studio, ranging from Elgato key lights, Blackmagic video switches, Sony Bravia televisions, Home Assistant entities, smart lights, pan tilt zoom cameras, and many, 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 many more AV components and smart devices. If it's on the network, someone's probably built or is working on a connection for it. Now, swinging back to the idea of installing BitFocus on its own server. Sure, you could have it running on your daily driver PC, but what happens to a USB Stream Deck when you power that PC down? It loses all functionality. The idea of running BitFocus on its own server means you can have the Stream Deck Studio powered and functional independent of the PCs that it's controlling. This is especially useful if your Stream Deck is now the control center for all the smart devices in Home Assistant, and you've got your PC powered down for the night. You still have control over those devices with the PC turned off. Obviously, with more complex system, your imagination can start running wild with all the cool stuff you can do. Controlling PCs in other rooms of the house, even muting someone else's stream from a different continent. Shout out to Finite Singularity and Nutty on that one. So we've seen a little bit of the potential of the Stream Deck Studio as powered by BitFocus, but I did want to touch on briefly two small things that you may have noticed in my flashy B-roll flybys. The USB-C port next to the right rotary encoder and the NFC symbol next to the left encoder. If you feel like 32 buttons still isn't enough for you, you can actually plug another Stream Deck directly into the Stream Deck Studio to effectively increase its canvas size. And if we take a look over in BitFocus buttons, we can see that you have the choice of giving it its own space, or you can have it overlap with an existing part of the Stream Deck Studio canvas if you'd like to have duplicate control buttons. The additional Stream Deck is now also powered by BitFocus buttons, giving you all of the cool features like sectioning, pop-outs, and authentication, which is where the NFC reader comes in. Now imagine you've got this powerhouse Stream Deck set up to control all sorts of things on multiple devices across your whole network. If left unattended, this could be a bit of a security risk. Luckily, BitFocus Buttons has the ability to lock down sections like this, so that whole areas of buttons can be inaccessible until you either enter a code or use a particular NFC chip to unlock the sections. Not only is this good for overall security, but it can prove pretty useful in production environments where certain features can be locked down to certain personnel. For example, microphones for audio engineers and video routing for producers. The final note to this is that, like I mentioned before, BitFocus Buttons is an open beta with a constantly evolving set of modules being cultivated by the open source community. This is just the beginning, sparked by a brilliant collaboration between Elgato and BitFocus. Stream Deck Studio is definitely not marketed for everyone, but I think everyone can agree that it's a pretty nice piece of kit. Let me know in the comments how many of these you'd like to stack in your rack.